this morning. All right, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise as we get ready to get started. Amen. I want to ask everyone just to make your way into the uh, gym here and we'll get ready to start. We've got several announcements this morning that we'll, uh, we want to get straight. All right, all right. Well, I just want to welcome all CFC family and friends that are here today. Look at your name and wave to them and say hello. All right. I want to welcome all those on, watching online this morning. If you couldn't be here, we're glad to, uh, to have you at least watching online. Do we have any first-time visitors here today? We got one right there. How you doing, sir? Glad to see you. Let, let's give him a hand clap. Glad to have him here. He's visiting from out of town uh, through work and things, so you're welcome. As long as you're here, come on back. Amen. Glad to have you here. Those first time watching online, we want to welcome you. Glad to have you watching. Hopefully, the internet's working today. Amen. Everybody knows technology works except on Sunday mornings. That's <laughs> for services. So just want to remind everyone to stay connected uh, through all the different things we have on uh, social media sites. If uh, you look in your bulletin, there's this QR code you could scan with your cell phone, uh, and it'll be a quick link to our church website, our Facebook page, where we actually do the live streaming on Sunday mornings. Uh, there's prayer requests and prayer requests page uh, there. Uh, you can listen to sermons online, give online, and we also have a YouTube channel that you could turn into. Now, if you don't have social media and different things, you could actually, when you walk in the church in the back there, there's these prayer request cards. You could fill them out and uh, just place them in any one of the baskets up front, and we'll uh, take your prayer requests that way. Uh, you could do it online or in person like that. Uh, just a reminder, when you walk in on the foyer, little foyer table, there's also these change of address uh, cards. If your information changes, if you change phone numbers and send the storm an address, please uh, fill one of these out so we can have the correct address uh, for you in case, and phone them in case we need to get in touch with you. So I just want to remind everyone of that. So uh, I just want to say, those of you that don't have uh, social media, I'm going to show you. We got, I took five pictures this week of the work going on in church. I know people want to know what's going on and uh, things and when we're going to be back in the main church. Uh, and what I always say is we're seven days closer than last Sunday. So, amen. But hopefully by the end of this year, that's just an optimistic uh, thing. We should be back in. It may be sooner. It may be later. It all depends on contractor supplies and all those things. We don't know how much damage uh, the sound system has uh, with the wiring and stuff like that because uh, you can't, you'll never know until you start messing with it, trying to turn it back on. We got electrical issues uh, in other areas that the wall caved in. So just want to let you a few pictures to see. So if you put up that first picture, picture. This was Monday morning. They began ripping out. Now, as you know, we have the front wall was replaced. We had to tear down the whole cinder block wall, that front wall, and build uh, a wall out of plywood, which they uh, stuccoed the front. So we're getting ready. They're starting the sheetrock work uh, this week. So this is where they began tearing out the old sheetrock. So go to the second picture. So I, by the end of the day, all that ceiling had to come out and old insulation and things. So that's right here is where Tim used to have the drum cage. There used to be a drum cage there, but that's in a landfill somewhere. So uh, we'll, we'll have to build one back later. So let, let's look at the next picture. Next picture is the opposite side of the church. Uh, so so got a plywood and sheath, all that stuff. And as we're... Uh, pulling out insulation there. And then so we're going to look at uh, now, I think the next picture begins, some of the sheet work, uh, sheetrock work that got done. As you notice, the top ceiling part, uh, they haven't been able to reach yet. They're coming with scaffolds tomorrow uh, to start the higher part. So we got part of that done. And still, there's a lot of work in that baptismal change area that needs to be uh, done that you can't see from here. And so next picture is back the, uh, them working. That's kind of in the back where you can kind of see everything. Still got along the roof that we need to get done. Uh, and is there one more maybe? I, I forget. I lost count. That's it? That's it. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't counting. I knew there was five and I knew we were close. <laughs> All right. So just a little update for those of you that don't have social media so you could see a few pictures. We don't want anybody going 
take a tour in there because uh, there's still tools and all the kids are safe in the back because um, there, there's no tools and things in there. And mentioning on that part also, um, if you have kids that go to Club 345 or New Generations, uh, we're starting this week and they always kind of did uh, locking the doors once they get in for safety of the children that no one just walks in off the street. So if you need to get your child uh, early, you have to leave early. We did install the little remote doorbells on each glass door so you ring the doorbell the doorbell will ring in the class the teacher knows to come to the door and open the door for your children so that's in both uh, new generations and club 345 so just want to remind uh, them of that all right so uh, next we want to say congratulations to class of 2022 any any graduates that are in here right now and I know some of the schools, Lafouche Parish has gone longer than some of the other schools. Uh, I've just been seeing online all over graduation. Nichols, I think, had their graduation already. So if uh, no one graduated in here. Oh. <laughs> but we know, we know we got kids. How many of you are graduated junior high and is going to high school? Anybody? Right over there? All right. Congratulations to you. Pre-K to kindergarten. Anybody? Mason's in the nursery, okay, congratulations to him. Uh, and then we got, uh, what we got, yeah, high school graduate, Ava? Ava's graduating kindergarten, all right, here we go. What? Okay. Well, great, great. Uh, Melissa, who you had said? Rachel's a little girl? Okay. All right. Good, good. Well, tell them all congratulations, those watching online. Congratulations, class of 2022. Amen. So uh, just want a quick reminder of the women's Bible study on Tuesday nights. And as I showed with the pictures, what we're going to do starting this Tuesday um, the ladies' Bible study will move to the cafe over here because. Uh, Doing the sheetrock work, there's dust all over in the main sanctuary and things like that. So uh, we don't want to clean up the dust just for the Bible study to have them put the dust back the next day. So uh, what we're going to do is the ladies' Bible study will meet in this cafe uh, until further notice till we're able to get back over there uh, when they finish the sheetrock. All right. So uh, just want to uh, announce that our men's fellowship, we're going to have our first meeting since... Uh, the hurricane. What we're going to do is an outing to La Casa on Saturday, June 11th. Uh, all men are invited. We'll meet just meet at the parking lot there at 11:30 a.m. Have a little uh, fellowship for the men. Uh, I know, you know, with the storm, everybody's been working hard on their own projects and things like that. So we just want to kind of get together and uh, say hello to each other again. Uh, missing all our guys that usually met. And also, uh, what we're going to be starting on. June 1st, June is the next month, right? Yeah, June 1st is we're going to be, at the first Wednesday of the month, we're going to start our prayer meeting again. It'll be in here uh, until we could get to the other side. Uh, so there will not be no classes as far as children and nursery on the Wednesday night right now. Just the first Wednesday of every month, we're going to start having prayer meeting back uh, in this uh, building here. Again, we're going to get back to Wednesday nights like we used to once the church is open and things because uh, like these guys are working past six o'clock at night so there's uh, uh, we don't want to hinder going in there uh, when we're trying to work and things so uh, just come on out on Wednesday night uh, June 1st now actually this will be the first day of hurricane season so we will be praying <laughs> for hurricane <laughs> that there be a not active hurricane season and so come on out that it'll be seven to eight in this in this uh, building here all right so uh next thing i want to just read a verse of scriptures hebrews six ten says this god is not unfair he will not forget the work you did or the love you showed for him and the help you gave and are still giving to other christians what is our church model serving god by serving people. And what I want to just announce is on, I think it's June, put up the next 
thing. We're, we, we, we're missing, uh, we, we've lost one of our nursery workers, and on, uh, which is in here, this nursery. And on June 5th, we're going to have an opening that if anybody would be able to fill it, two ladies would be able to fill in for the nursery that day. Uh, we don't want to overload our nursery workers right now and give them an extra day uh, uh, of the week because they need to be in service also. So we want to help them out. So if two ladies would be able to volunteer that day, see Sister Wendy, Sister Wendy, stand up. Wave your arms, Sister Wendy. Do jumping jack. No, she is not going to do all that. <laughs> but uh, that's Sister Wendy. Let her know if you could uh, uh, help out on those days. Uh, if there's no one that volunteers, there will not be a nursery that day. We're, we're not going to overload the ladies we already got working. Uh, if, and again, if you want to do it just that day, it's fine. If you want to uh, help out... Uh, each month, uh, we're going to say which month day is open that we have availability. But there's also a card in the back that you can fill out for nursery help. So just help us out in that way if you can. We serve God by serving others. And uh, if, you're, if you don't like changing diapers, don't worry. You don't have to. And you don't, you're not supposed to. Even in the nursery there, um, just to give you a little update, uh, when, when they drop off their children, you give them a little beeper like in a restaurant that vibrates, and there's a, a thing back there and if the ch uh, child needs a diaper change you buzz their parent to come in and the parents change their diapers uh, we don't want our leaders uh, messing with with the diapers with you know bring uh, bring your uh, diapers and you come in and change it so you don't have to change diapers so don't <laughs> that's a plus for some of us right I remember changing uh, my kids diapers oh that was the worst thing my wife used to laugh at me. I used to hold them about three, as far away from me as I can and put them under the bat water. <laughs> Amen. So there's none of that. So, uh, again, just uh, if you'd be able to help out that day, we're more than happy to have you. All right. So uh, just want to wish anyone having a birthday, happy birthday, uh, between now and next Sunday. Anyone between today and next Sunday having a birthday? Going once? Going twice? All right. If anybody online, happy birthday. What about anniversaries? Anyone have an anniversary between now and next Sunday? Nope. Now, next year, at this time, KJ will be able to stand up. KJ is getting married this Friday. Yeah, Darren and all of a sudden, he's not up there right now, but he's going to be getting married. Um, Darren's been practicing his George Jefferson dance. So, uh, for. <laughs> Amen, but his, uh, his, KJ is going to be getting married, so uh, congrat tell him congratulations, we, we all said. Amen. So if anyone have an anniversary online, we just want to wish you happy anniversary. All right, if you get all your tithes and offerings as we get ready to receive uh, this morning's tithes and offerings, just want to let you know how you can give today if you're not here or if you choose to give this way. The first way would be at the post office. You can mail it to Christian Fellowship Church. P.O. Box 1427, La Rosa, Louisiana. Or you could go online and give at welcometocfc.com. All these things are in the bulletin, so uh, I won't keep a bulletin. You can have that. Uh, next way is text to give to area code 985-304-2442. But the best way to give is how? Being here in the house of the Lord. Glad to have everyone here. Good to see everyone smiling faces. There's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. David said, I'm glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord today. So if you would stand to your feet as we read our uh, scriptures for this week's offering. From Psalms chapter 19, starting in verse 9, it says, The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm and are and all of them are righteous. Psalms 33, 8 says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. Psalms 115, 11 says, You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. And Psalms 115, verse 13 says, He will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. So take your offering in your right hand and repeat after me this morning. Say, As I give in today's offering, I commit myself to walk in the fear of the Lord with humility and sincerity and to respect, honor, and obey the Lord God Almighty. I repent of any independent attitude or pride and ask God to keep me and bless me 
in every way. I give today with total confidence in my God. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says amen. So if you would take your offering, we've got three baskets along the front. Come on and drop off your offering and tithes this morning. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, thank God. Look at the other neighbor and say, thank God. This is the last weekend you got to put up with me on the base. Scott Terry will be back here next week. <laughs> so thank God. <laughs> Amen. Our call to worship for the month of May is from Psalms chapter 47, verses 1 and 2. It says this. Clap your hands, all you nations. So come on, let's do what the word of the Lord says. Clap your hands. It says, shout to God with cries of joy. Come on, shout to the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. For the Lord most high is awesome, the great king over all the earth. In Psalms 47, uh, we'll jump to verse 5 and 7. It says this, God has ascended amid the shouts. The, the, the shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding trumpets. And every time I read verse 6, I say, what is he trying to tell us? Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. What, what do you think he's, does he get his message across that we're, and what is praise? Praise is thanking God for what he's already done. Worship is worshiping God for who he is, a holy, eternal, sovereign God. But we praise him for the things he's done in the past and the things he'll do in the future. So it says, sing praises to him, for God, for God is the king over all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. Father, we just come to you this morning. I turn this service over to you, Father God, right now. We ask that your spirit have its way in this place, Father God. Father, I just pray that your anointing would flow through this place and through those who are watching online this morning, Father God, that all our hearts be open to you this morning. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray, and everyone shouts, Amen, Amen. Now, all those effects that make it sound good, because I know how my...
hand lifted up right now. Father, we just worship you this morning. You are a holy God. Father, we thank you for your presence here this morning, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone shouts, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on. Let's give him a shout of praise. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. You could be seated for a moment. For a moment. I don't know how long that moment is. Remember? Yeah, we got a bunch of football fans here, and we know the last two minutes in a game or the last two moments last probably about 45 minutes. So my moments are based on that. But we want to go ahead and uh, have our new generations and three cl club 345 leaders uh, make their way to the door there as we get ready for them to go across the street. Uh, remember, parents, that if you need to pick up your child early, the doors will be locked. There's a doorbell that you ring, and they'll hear it there. And uh, Now, nobody go play a prank on them and ding, 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 and run away. You know? <laughs> so, all right, children, 3 through 11, if you'd make your way to your class. Amen. Let's give a hand clap for these kids as they make their way to their classes there. <laughs> Amen. If you would, take out your notes this morning. Oh, man, I forgot to give my offering. I forgot. I gave one. I didn't give the other one. Amen. Uh, Jessica, can you go put that in the box for me there? Thank you so much, Jess. Amen. Amen. How many of you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Well, the rest of you, I hope uh, you change your mind by the end of service. Um, but let's just go to the Lord. Uh, I got about 35 minutes here uh, to share the word with you, and um, when I started this message, studying for this message, I did not intend it to go into be a, a more than just today, but there's no way I could even, I'm hoping to get through the notes I gave you today, and that's only about halfway of what I need to talk about uh, this morning, so uh, there will be a part two to this next week. I may mention a few things uh, as I'm talking about what we'll talk about more next week, but this is called Pray and Don't Give Up. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer as we get started this morning. Father, I just come to you right now, and I lift up each and every person within the sound of my voice, whether it be in this room right now or online watching at this moment or in the future. Father, I just pray that your spirit would move in each and every one of our lives, Father God. I pray that every ear, every deaf ear be open to the spiritual truths of your word this morning. Father, I pray that every blind eye be open to the spiritual truths of your word this morning. I pray that every mind could comprehend your truths this morning, Father God. And I pray that even the hardest of hearts would be softened to receive your word today, Father God. That the seed of your word could take plant a root in their hearts, Father God. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says, Amen. Amen. So my title, Pray and Don't Give Up, is, comes actually comes from Luke chapter uh, 18, verse 1, if you'd put that up there first. And I, as I was reading uh, things, it, it just, Jesus told them, his disciples, a parable to show them that they should, what kind of pray? Always pray and not give up. Now I kind of... To pray and don't give up uh, is, is a spin on that, the way it's saying there, but always pray and not give up. Now, what I want to talk about today is, it's, it's, sometimes you kind of question the way God works, how God works, and can we understand that we're finite beings and God's an infinite God, and we'll never understand. If, if you meet somebody that tells you they understand everything about God, don't listen to them because they're, they're deceiving themselves. We cannot. We don't even understand everything about earth here. I don't understand how that light bulb in that projector can shoot out that. There's no way. I, I don't understand. I can't comprehend the things of earth that man does. How am I supposed to comprehend the things of eternal God? So we, we understand that we don't understand everything. And part of what 
I want to talk about this morning is praying, that Jesus says to always pray. Now, does that mean that 24 hours a day you're praying? No. It, what he's talking about is constantly be in prayer and never give up. And, but what today's message is about is starting to that I believe God and Jesus shows examples that he wants us to pray more than once about something. You know, some, some people have this idea, or super spiritual, that uh, if you pray more than once about it, you don't have faith. Well, that's not according to the Word of God. Because Jesus says that we should always pray and not give up. And can, can, I, can I say it this way? I believe he's trying to tell us that once you quit praying, you're giving up. Think about that. He's saying, one, you see, the only way things could change is not by might, not by yourself, not by power, your power, but by his spirit. So we're in a spiritual warfare and we need to pray. The only way to fight a spiritual battle is in prayer. And if I don't pray and continue to pray about what I, whatever I'm needing, facing in my life, you're giving up. Think, think about that. So either I'm praying or giving up. I'm doing one of the two. I'm letting things just happen as they're going to, or I'm going to try and through prayer let God move and intervene in a situation in my life. So you're either praying or you're giving up, and that's what Jesus was telling us. Pray always, continue every day, bring it up until two thing, one of two things is going to happen. Either God's going to answer the prayer and have it happen the way you said, or God's going to change you, your heart. Because sometimes our prayers hate to say it, are more about us and not about the will of God. And sometimes the situation we're in in our life is the very situation God is using to try and change you and try and change me. God is using that as, if you want to say, uh, Brother Allen used to say, as the sandpaper. I, I don't know about you, but if you've ever rubbed sandpaper on yourself, it doesn't feel too good. But it's to smooth out all our rough edges. That sometimes the very situation we're going through and praying God to remove from our life is the very situation God's allowing in our life to change us. So either I'm going to continue, I need to continue praying till God has the breakthrough that I'm in line with his word and his will or that it changes me. See, I, I've already prayed for things in my past 20 years ago that I'm glad God said no to now. That I, that I realized that no was the best answer from God. Amen. So we understand that. So part of what, what I, I was thinking about is, you know, we, we serve a sovereign God, the almighty, all-powerful, who is in control of everything. So why should we pray? It, it, people take that and say, well, God's in control, then why even pray? What can we do if he has ultimate say-so? Why should I pray? Because Jesus said to. Plain and simple. If you love me, you obey what I command. And he commands us to pray. So we know, we know we need to pray. And these things. And prayer is communication between God. And I, I'm, I'm going to chase the rabbit from next week. Right now. <laughs> but a little bit. I just want to tell you. Sometimes God has to allow things. God wants to communicate with you so bad. That sometimes he will allow things in your life because that's the only time you'll talk to him. When things are going good, you have no need. I'll put you in the closet, God, until I have an emergency. I'll give you a call then. That sometimes the things we go through in life is God just trying to get us to call out to him and rely on him. And we'll talk about that more next week. But what, if God's sovereign, why should we pray? And think about this. But God has chosen to give you free will. To let you make choices in your life. It doesn't mean he's not in control of your life. And let me put it this way. It's like, you, how many are parents, grandparents in here? Raise your hand. Right? You're the head of the household. You're in charge of the household. But don't you sometimes let your children make decisions? God lets us make decisions. God lets us make choices. Adam and Eve, did God want them to eat the fruit? No. But he allowed them to make the choice. He gave them free will. So in the gumbo of prayer... 
<laughs> That's what I want to call it, the gumbo of prayer. There's lots of ingredients in it. Is God the sovereign God, the will of God? He's in control of everything, but also is my will. You got to throw in there, besides the rule, you got to throw in other people's will. How many have ever prayed for someone else? Those of you that haven't prayed for someone else, you need to start praying for other people. You need to pray for others besides yourself. But also, I'm praying for this person, but this person has a will of their own. I'm praying for salvation for this person, but that person has to make the decision. Is it God's will for them to be saved? Yes. It's God's will that none should perish, but all come to repentance. It's God's will for that. I'm praying for God's will to be done in their life, but that person still has the choice. So sometimes prayer gets hindered because of people's wills and wants. God will not force anything on anybody. God wants every single person to be saved. He sent his son to die on that cross so every person could be saved. And he offers it to every person, but every person has to have the will. Make up their mind to be saved. Matthew, well, let let me uh, put up Ephesians 1, uh, 17. This isn't in your notes. It's something I'll add it a little bit. (laughs) I was trying to take things out to save time, to try and fit it all into one service, and then I said, well, I'm going to add it back. Uh, Things. But Ephesians, I know I love what Paul prayed for the Ephesians church. He says this, it should be on the screen. I think I put it in there. I do what? I, what kind of asking? Keep asking. Notice that. He says, I keep asking God. He didn't say, I just ask God once. But I ask God and I keep on asking till I see it come to fruition. Or until God changes my heart in some way. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. We want, uh, that, that was one of a scripture I held on to for many years, I still do, uh, but it just came back, I just... I used to pray that every morning, and I kind of got away from it. God, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation so I may know you better. You see, God's spirit opens up our our spirit to understand. Sometimes God's word doesn't doesn't make sense to an unbeliever. Right? A lot of the things are so obvious to you right now. You remember when you were lost in the world? Say, oh, that don't make sense. But now it's so obvious because your spiritual eyes have been opened. Your spiritual ears have been opened. And you could see that you have a wisdom and revelation that things will be opened up to you. But I, but I want to focus on that uh, where he says, keep asking. I keep asking. Did Paul not have faith? That he asked God more than once? He said, no, you are to keep asking. And let me go on to Matthew chapter 6. Now I got, uh, I'm sorry, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> oh. I take a shot of water here. Matthew chapter 6, on your page I only have verse 8, but I'm going to read verses 5 through 8. It says this, let, let me find it here, it's easier for me. All right, it says this. Uh, let's just read verse 8 that's on your paper, So, and then I'll go back. Verse 8 says this. Jesus is speaking. There's red letters. He says, don't be like them. He's speaking of the Pharisees. Uh, for your father knows what you want before you ask him. So wait, let's just focus on that part now. Why, so why do I need to ask a God who's in total control of everything, and he already knows what I need before I ask him? See, that's why some people, well, why does it pay to pray? He already knows what I need. But you're going to see through Scripture, he says, you don't have because you don't ask. God knows everything. He's omniscient. He's a, he knows everything about every situation. But for some reason, he wants us to communicate with him and to talk with him and ask him to move in certain situations. But like everything else, 
Humans have a way of taking what God wanted in a spiritual sense and messing it up. We, we could take even prayer. People were taking prayer and twisting it and using it for what, not, what it was not intended for. And this is where I'm going to read the whole thing uh, to you here. Uh, speaking about prayer, so verse 5. Matthew 6, verse 5. So if you have your Bibles, you could open there. It'll be up on the screen. He says, and when you pray, Jesus is speaking. Notice he didn't say, and if you pray. And throughout this, he's going to say, when you pray. In other words, he was saying, you are to pray. It's not if you pray, but when you, he's taking, almost taking for granted that you do pray. You know you need to pray. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. He's talking about the Pharisees. For they love to pray standing in synagogues and on the street corners. And here's the reason. Would they changed it into, would they twisted it into, to be seen by others. You see, the motive of their prayer became, let me stand before the crowd and perform to prove my holy righteousness to them. And he says that they've taken and twisted what, is, what, I'm, what God meant to be a personal, intimate moment for you and God to pray, be together and speaking together. They've taken it to shine glory on themselves. Don't be like them. And, and again, there is corporate prayer, and we're going to talk about that a little later, either today or uh, next Sunday. We are going to have, there is place for that. But what the uh, Pharisees were doing, it was a show. It was, it was, a self-righteous, let me stand before and I'm going to say all these clever things and people watch me. He says, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. So God says, God knows the motives behind everything we do. Look, if you can't do anything without showing it on Facebook, if you can't do anything for God without having to tell everybody what you're doing for God, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Now, it doesn't matter if people know about the things, but if, if well, hold on, hold on, we're not going to feed you till I put it on Facebook. Let, let's make sure we've got a connection here. Hold on, hold on, guy on the street. You see, if, if that's what I'm doing it for, I've twisted everything toward myself. I'm trying to get the light to shine on me instead of on God. So when we see things going on, we need to say, you know, say this, I'm going to do this for God even if no one knows. And even if no one ever knows because it's the right thing to do. I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing it to God, unto God. And he said that. How, how, when have I ever fed you? When you fed the needy. But if I, if I do it to be seen by others, then he says, you've received your full reward. You, you did it for the applause of people. You did it for the likes on Facebook. There you go. But then he goes on to say this. But if you pray, no, notice, assuming, you, I know you know you got to pray. He says, but when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, be, uh, and pray to the Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in the secret will reward you. Do it because it's the right thing to do, not because you want others to see you doing it. And that's what he is talking to the Pharisees who were who was putting on their big production. And they weren't doing it for the right reasons. And then it goes on to say... In verse 7, and notice that saying again, when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans. And he's talking about the Pharisees again, who had their clever little cliches, and they'd stand up and all these things. And we could even take the Our Father prayer, which is a good prayer, model prayer that Jesus gave us, and you could turn that into a babbling. It's just a quickly, like I always say, the one, rub-a-dub-dub, thank you for the grub. Is that much of a prayer? Have I made a connection with God? I sit down at the table and rub-a-dub-dub, thank you for the grub. See you later. It's a rehearsal. And I say this 
Because I remember as I was wit- worked at Dan Austin Cure and I was witnessing to this guy that was working with me, and he comes in, and he's, uh, we're talking about prayer, and he's, oh, yeah, he said, uh, I think it was 10 hour fall this that morning. And I said, well, I said, prayer is supposed to be a communication with God and talking to God. That, that prayer in itself is not bad. But then I said this, so what does that prayer mean? What did that prayer ask? And he was stunned, like, I don't know. I could recite it good. You see, it was just a, a repetitive thing. Now, you could take that model prayer and pray it, but f- pausing and focusing on what it's really talking about. But I could say, I follow who are in heaven, I'll be that name, and just say it, keep on babbling. That's not a communication between you and God. So he says, when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. That's why I said it ten times. No. It's communicating with God. And then verse 8 says, which we were uh, read a little bit earlier, so don't be like them. Don't do those things. Don't do it just to be seen by man. Don't do it uh, just a rehearsed or uh, something you memorize. He says, for your father knows what you need before you even ask him. God already knows those things, and that's why we're kind of talking about, so then why pray? Look at your neighbor and say, because Jesus said to you. That's good enough for me. Jesus says we are to. So, let, let's move on to the next verse here. John, 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says this. And I'm kind of laying the foundation of, of prayer and different things, why some prayers are answered, some prayers are not. He says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. See, prayer causes you to approach God to have that conversation. That if we ask anything, notice he didn't just say anything, was the next four words, according to his will. That if we ask anything according to his will. Do you know that every single person that ever prayed to be saved got saved? Because it's God's will and their will lined up. Why, why did Jesus heal so many people? All these things and as, as it went on and that's what I was thinking about. Do you know who was most in tune ever with the will of the Father? It was the Son Jesus. Everything he prayed was with the will of the Father wanted at that moment. When he rose, when he prayed for Lazarus to be risen from the dead, the Father wanted to show humankind that God had the power over life and death. That's why he did it. It wasn't for us to go out to the, uh, let's go to Holy Rosary Cemetery right now and start praying for the dead to be raised to life. That's not what it was. It was God was taking that moment with Jesus, and Jesus was so in touch with the will of the Father, knowing that God wanted to show the world that he has power over life and death. Jesus always prayed the will of the Father. He was one with the Father. That's why all his prayers got answered. Because he never prayed out of a selfish about him. He always prayed what the actual will of the Father was at that time. But we don't, we, we don't know exactly every moment what the will of the Father is. All we know is the will of the Father is that we pray. And how many times we don't even do that. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Jesus always prayed according to what was the Father's will at the time. And if, you, and if we know that he hears us, wh- whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask for, ask of him. When it is according to his will, when it is according to what he wants. <coughs> Look at James chapter 4 verses 2 and 3. It says this, you covet, what that means. You desire, you want things. You want things. Do you know the only prayer that Jesus got told no to was if this cup could pass before me? 
See, Jesus' will was that that cup would pass before him, that he wouldn't have to go to the cross. But he said, not yet, not my will, but thy will. That's the only time God ever said, no, I can't answer that prayer. Because I need you to go to the cross. I need you to go through that. He says, you covet, you want these things. He says, but you, uh, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. And then he says this, you do not have, why? Wait, back up, uh, put it back up there. You do not have because why? What? You do not have because you do not ask. Why God wants to work it out that way? He knows what we need before we ask, but you do not have because you do not ask. God wants us to communicate with Him, to, be, to rely on Him. And it says, you covet, but you, you uh, can't. It says, and you do not have because you do not ask. Go to the next verse, please. And then He says, here's another reason. When you ask, you do not receive because you are asking with what? Wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own, own pleasures. In other words, you're asking for God to make your life better. And God wants our life to be better. But there's a bigger picture involved. There's the will of God for everything. And he says, when you ask, you're, you're just doing it basically out of greed. You covet, you want, God, do this for me. Make my life easier. Can I tell you something? God is more worried about your character than your comfort. You hear me? God is more concerned about your character being like the image of his son than it is your comfort in this life. We're focused on what? Comfort. God, take this away so I can quit suffering. Because you ask with the wrong motives. Let let me take you somewhere here. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 24, this isn't in your notes again. This is when I was trying to trim some things out. I won't even get through today's notes. But Matthew chapter 16, talking about the will of God versus our will. All right. Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 24. This is where Jesus predicts his death, and Peter tells him, no. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Notice this. Jesus knows the will of the Father, what God wants done. The big picture. Peter is focusing on what's, how he's going to feel. How it will affect him. How things, things will happen in his life. Notice what it says here. This is uh, Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that what? He must. Not that he had a choice because it was the Father's will for this to take place. So we could be saved today. He says, I must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. Now think of Peter. Here's his friend Jesus. He loves Jesus. And Jesus is telling him, look, I need to go there and I'm going to suffer a lot of things. So what is Peter saying? I don't want you to suffer. I love you. Right? We don't want to see our loved ones suffer, our loved ones hurting in any way, because it hurts us. And he's beginning to think to himself, oh no, I never let this happen. He says, uh, I need to suffer many things at the hands of the elders. He says, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be what? Killed. Think about that statement. If, if you're, Peter wasn't quite understanding everything, he says, I don't want you to die. You're all I got. I love you. I'm here for you. I would never let that happen to you. And he got on his cell phone. AT and T. 
And he called the church. Prayer meeting, prayer meeting. They're coming after Jesus. Let's all join together and make sure they don't get Jesus. What was happening? See, he was, Peter was seeing his world starting to fall apart. But the bigger picture was Jesus had to go to the cross. The big picture what God sees is that Jesus had to go to the cross, had to suffer, had to be killed and raised up so we all could be saved. Thank God he didn't answer the prayers of Peter and the church group. Now notice, notice what he goes on to say. Uh, that he must be killed, but he tells him this, but on the third day be raised to life. Next verse. Peter then took Jesus aside and rebuked him. No, buddy, this ain't happening. He says, never, Lord, never will I let them uh, make you suffer. Never will I let them kill you. Never will I let this happen to you. I love you too much. And then Jesus says this to him. Uh, he says, Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block. Now, Peter was not possessed by Satan in any way. Jesus just recognized uh, that Satan was trying to get him off path through words that Peter was speaking that you don't have to go through this. We'll rescue you from this. And he says... You are a stumbling block to me. Jesus says, I know what I'm going through is tragic. It's going to be tragic. He says, but I know it's the will of the Father. And Jesus says, you do not have, uh, do not have in mind the what? Concerns of God. But merely human concerns. You see, you're, you're praying to me for the human concerns, but God cannot answer that prayer because of the God concerns. God sees the bigger picture. That makes sense? Some, we don't see it. We don't, we're finite beings. We don't understand everything. So sometimes when we, the prayers don't come answered the way we are, there's a bigger picture that we will never know till we get to heaven. Why things happen. He, he was he's so concerned about Jesus. Why? We, I'll never let this happen to you. Psalms 37, verse 4 and 5 says this. Take delight in the Lord. Circle that on your paper. Delight in the Lord. And give, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, most people think that actually means, and God will bless you and wants you to be happy in different things. But give you the desires of your heart is not meaning, oh, I want a nice $40,000 bass boat. Give me the desires of my heart. Oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. What he's actually telling you there, because you can't take off the beginning of it, he says, delight yourself in the Lord with the Lord wants in your life. And he will put desires, in, he will give you the desires of your heart. In other words, he says, I want to remove your human-minded desires what you are so concerned about yourself, and I want to put the big picture of the Father's will in your heart, the Father's desire. You see, that's what Jesus had, the Father's desire. That's why he went to the cross. He prayed that this wouldn't happen, but he says, but my desire is your desire. That he was faithful and obedient even unto death. Why? Because the, he allowed the Father's desires to be in his heart, not his own selfish desires. Then verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. What that means? Commit my way means do what God wants, not what you want. Commit your way to the Lord that I'm going to walk and do everything God wants me to do, with everything God calls me to do in life. I'm going to do that. That's what Jesus did. Jesus set the example. He committed his life to the Lord, and he walked in the will of the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Then he tells you this. Trust in him. 
trust in his ways because it may not make sense to us at the time. And he will do this. Trust in him. Commit your life to follow the will of God. You pray for, and stay in communication and never give up till God changes the situation or changes your heart about the situation. You do that, you commit your life to God and commit your life to following the will of God in your life. And things will change. I'll close with this next scripture here. And Lord help us, I got four more pages of notes that I thought I was getting to today. And I got four more pages at home. Notice what Matthew 7, 11 says. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Matthew used to work at the convenience store, 7-Eleven. That's where this comes from. They were bought out by Time Saver later, but uh, Matthew 7 Notice what Jesus says. And again, we're, we're talking about prayers that don't get answered, different things. He, Jesus tells them this, if, then, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Think about what he says. He says that you lost people, you know how to give a good gift to your children. He says this, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask them? Who ask him? Think about that. So if, if, if those who are evil, evil people are, know how to give good gifts to their children, God is not like us. God is not like evil people, uh, lost people. He says, if they know how to give good gifts and want what's best for their children, how much more will God, our Heavenly Father give good gifts to you? Now, can I tell you something? Maybe the very thing you're praying for, you think is a good gift, and God's saying, this will destroy you if you get it. Maybe it's that relationship the person's praying for. Oh, this, and God says, if you hook up with this person, it's downhill. God sometimes says no because what we're praying for is not good for us. He will not give you, even though you pray for it, he will not give you something that will harm you. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Hazel. Hey, think about that. God will always protect you and not give you something to bring you harm, even though you desire it. That's why you keep praying about the situation and God's going to end up changing your heart. He's either going to change the heart. He'll, he won't give it to you. You'll never, and you may, God, why, why, why? But again, next, maybe next week, uh, or the week out, this may be a three-part. We're going to get into the why sometimes God works in situations through prayer that wanting us to trust him because he's trying to work inside of us and those things. Amen. So please do not throw your notes. Don't make a little jet when you get home with them. Keep those notes for next week. I'll have some more to hand out. I got to make a note where I stopped here today. Uh, again, I had three more pages I thought I was going to get to. So can I just say, continue praying. I want to encourage you on June 1st, come on out to the prayer meeting. Pray with us in corporate prayer. Again, it's not to be shown. It's not that. We'll explain a little bit of that next week or the next week, uh, wherever we get to. But remember, we are praying or we're giving up. Keep on praying and don't give up. When I cease to pray about it, I'm giving up on the situation. God is faithful. Can I tell you, God is always on time, but it's his time. Right? Don't we wish we served the Burger King God instead of the king? Right? That we could have it our way? Right? We want it our way. But God says, no, trust me. My timing. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we close in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just 
thank you for today. I thank you for everyone that's here in this place today, Father. Again, I just uh, lift up each and every person within the sound of my voice, and I ask that your word would take root inside of each and every one of our hearts, Father, as we continue this study about prayer and never giving up, Father God, how you want us to be persistent in our prayer life, Father. So from this day forward, I pray that you would remind each and every one in our spirit every morning when we wake up to get before you and communicate with you. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says... Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. God bless you.